Well, you know, that was um, fun while it lasted. I think it's only fair. I know the relationship between content creator and viewer. You guys love seeing more pain. So we're gonna double that. Let me quickly explain before I do the heinous acts I'm about to do. About a month ago, I did a charity stream with a bunch of YouTubers for the Indonesian stadium disaster. And I said that if we raised over a thousand dollars, I would wear a Spurs shirt for an entire video. And we did it in like less than seven hours. Okay, boys. <laughs> for a thousand dollars, I spent my hard earned money on um, this absolute piece of fu- It says, uh, for a good cause. Uh, it's my coping mechanism at this point. I really don't want to do this, but you know, um, a promise is a promise. Let me just do some real uh, movie magic real quick, okay? And... Uh, I hate this. I feel like I've actually committed a war crime wearing this. This is horrible. I'm gonna spit on this badge after this video is done. It was for a good cause though. It was for a good cause. Also, we're very much closing in on that 10k follower goal on Instagram. And like I said before, if we hit 10k followers on Instagram, I'll do a 20 World Cup shirts giveaway. So follow that Instagram, get it to 10,000, and we'll do that giveaway. Greg Berhalter, before this tournament even started, had some very controversial selections to the squad. The likes of Haji Wright over Jordan Pifok, and more shockingly, Jesus Ferreira over Ricardo Pepe. Pepe, by the way, had the second most goals scored in qualifiers for us, and he was also experiencing better form than Ferreira in a better league. Oh yeah, and there's also the MLS quota inclusions of Shaq Moore, Jordan Morris, and, and, and Christian Roldan. But hey, at the end of the day, you just gotta root for this team no matter what. So a couple weeks later, and the World Cup finally arrives, and our first match was against Wales. And after dominating throughout the first half, we draw first blood through Timothy Weah. But much like every Greg Berhalter match against a proper tactician, the opposition changes a few things, Greg Berhalter doesn't adapt to it, and we get punished. But next was the US versus England, the match everyone had been looking forward to. This was the first time in probably over a decade that the US was truly unified against one enemy. And despite England's far more superior talents, we were the better team throughout the first half. In the second half, however, England started to control the match more, but really weren't that effective anyways. So in the end, the match ends nil-nil, and USA wins nil-nil memes started popping up for a few hours. Finally, there was USA-Iran, and in order to get out of the group, the US would have to beat the Iranians. In the match, however, after dominating throughout the first half, President Pulisic would sacrifice his children for the sake of this country. And then just when we have Iran on the ropes, we invite them back into the match. Yeah, nothing's changed. You thought something would change? Oh, come on. Come on, it's been four years. You really think so? Luckily, though, Iran never could score despite having many good opportunities, and we escaped with a 1-0 win. England defeated Wales in their last match to win the group, so we'd advance as runners-up where we'd play the Netherlands. Here's a little quick story time. A day before this match, was the last day of the group stages. And my plan was to finish the group stage review after the last matches were done. This was basically a time crunch I created for myself because I refused to upload the group stage review during the knockouts. Now, I thought I'd be done at around 1 to 2 a.m. I wasn't finished uploading that video until like 5. And alongside that plan was me driving two hours to a watch party for the USA Netherlands match. So I got about an hour and a half of sleep, and then hit the road. And if it wasn't for Viet Coffee, I probably would have crashed and died that day. So shout out Vina Cafe. Anyways, as I was driving through the fifth circle of hell, also known as I-40 East, they were playing these promos for like Anthony Robinson and Tyler Adams, and I could truly feel the American patriotism just coursing through my veins. And by the time I was 40 minutes away from my destination, I was truly in the American spirit, f***ing punching my steering wheel and screaming. Uh, you know, as you do. But once Alexi Lala started speaking, it was like all that excitement converted to cringe, and I was about three seconds from switching to the Dutch side. That last part was a joke, but with 15 minutes left to my destination, the player started walking out. And on a completely different side note, that one World Cup song with Gims, it's grown on me. But the match began about five minutes later with me legally trying to get to the party as fast as possible. Within the first three minutes though, my hope truly spiked with President Pulisic nearly becoming the hero again. I couldn't really believe my ears. The US were performing well. 
at the start of a last 16 match. My hope began to skyrocket. There's a chance we could actually beat the Dutch. Don't freeze, gets the cross cut back. Perhaps I got a little too excited. I still had a little bit of hope, but I knew from the very moments that when the Netherlands scored 1-0, it would be very difficult for us to get back into this match. This was the most ideal outcome for the Dutch coach Louis van Gaal. He's not well known for his attacking, but when it comes to defensive football, he's got that on lock. The Dutch then had a mid-block that was set up to outnumber the Americans on the flanks every single time. We could not get anything going. Keep in mind also, the US seemed to strictly only attack through the wings. Which brings us to the next problem, the US's abysmal attack. Now, the US attack throughout the entire tournament has been very subpar, very underwhelming, and today was no difference. It honestly was even worse. We had the majority of the possession, that's pretty cool, you know? Greg Berhalter would be over the moon with that, but um, we couldn't really do anything with it. But my biggest problem with the US attack has to be the fact that we tried the same thing over and over and over again, expecting something different to happen. Greg Berhalter's system loves crossing the ball. In fact, the US led the entire tournament in crosses attempted before Croatia v Japan. And how many of those crosses were converted into goals? Zero. Every striker has not done well in this system, and we have attempted this system with like seven of them. So why is Greg Berhalter so persistent with this system? It doesn't work. It's been proven time and time again. You could literally make a science project out of this. The whole point of having strikers with different profiles is to create some diversity in the way you play. And we don't see that at all with Greg. We use the same system with different strikers that have different profiles, and of course it's not gonna work. Not once in the last four years have I seen Greg Berhalter utilize the actual profiles of some of these strikers, very unique profiles that we could use to our advantage, but we never seem to use it to our advantage because we are stuck with this system that for some reason Greg Berhalter is confident that can work, despite the fact it has not worked throughout the entire tournament, throughout the last four years. This makes no sense, because when you have this many strikers, you could trouble the defense with them. And yet, for some reason, we can't do that! If Greg could just listen through his thick f***ing skull and just look at what other teams are doing, we could maybe, just maybe have a little bit more of an effective attack. Look at what Wales did. They had Dan James, a speedy winger, playing striker throughout the first half against us. And that didn't work. So what did they do? They changed things up. But not only did they change the player, they changed the way the team played. You went from a Welsh team that played on the ground with Dan James to a Welsh team that played more direct and used the aerial abilities of striker Kiefer Moore. And it worked out for them. They scored because of it. And another thing, more often than not, the wingers and fullbacks are crossing into nothing. What confuses me even more is we have players like Weston McKenney who can actually make an impact in the box, but he's out there on the wing. It doesn't make any sense. This guy has proven time and time again for the US and for club level that he- <coughs> It doesn't make sense. This man has shown that he can score in the air with the US and also at club level. Anyways, after doing jack shit with the ball for over 35 minutes, the Dutch punish our stationary defending on transition and double the lead. In into the second half, and wow, Gio Reyna, he has been freed from jail. Unfortunately though, as you would expect, Greg Berhalter still didn't change a f***ing thing. Not even the intensity of the attack increased. We were still playing so passively. We're 2-0 down in a last 16 match. This is not a time to play conservatively. Eventually though, we'd increase the aggression, and by some miracle, Haji Wright scores to cut the deficit. That didn't matter though, because our defense is f***ing non-existent! Who the f*** is marking Denzel Dumfries? John Cena? We made Denzel Dumfries, who was arguably not really having that good of a tournament, look like prime Roberto Carlos. Apparently the whole goal of this match was to mark defenders by staying as far away from them as physically possible. Because if you look at every goal that was scored by the Dutch, you could see miles of space between the defender and the attacker. 
Every single one of them. We made it look so easy, way too easy. If you look at the replays, it's like the Dutch were playing on amateur mode. It was just so odd because players like Tyler Adams, who have had fantastic tournaments, looked way off. And dear lord, Serginho Dest and Anthony Robinson, they're not great at defending either way, but they were exposed more than Twitch streamers this summer. But I hope to god, I, I truly hope to god, that I don't have to see Walker Zimmerman for a while. That man was so shaky in defending and also on the ball. It was one thing having a very underwhelming attack. It was another having a defender that was so hesitant to ever let go of the ball. Walker Zimmerman killed every single bit of momentum we had when it came to at least trying to build up something. And it makes no sense because Cameron Carter-Vickers was healthy. He had a good game against Iran. What does this man have to do to get consistent starts? But shout out Matt Turner though, because that man had absolutely no help throughout the entire match, and he still did pretty well. But yeah, all hope is gone. I have returned to my pessimistic ways, as the US has officially been eliminated. So long, American passion for football. We'll see you in four years time, but welcome those who have found themselves wanting more of this sport. All I can say is it's a beautiful, wide open world of intrigue, so go farther than the US national team and explore for yourself. Now, overall verdict for this World Cup. Listen, we had our moments, and I'll never forget that Pulisic goal against Iran. I will always admire the players and their spirit throughout this entire tournament as well. That desire to win every match against all odds was absolutely infectious, and I think in the end, that's what turned many heads towards the team. Greg also did pretty well with the starting 11s and had some really good first halves. But in the end, it was Greg Berhalter's antics and shortcomings that led to our demise in the end. The attack, again, was a genuine insult to my eyes throughout the entire tournament. But more importantly, those second halves that we saw from Greg Berhalter, constantly inviting teams back into the match and killing off games with those substitutions. I am fully convinced that with this talent, if we had a better coach, we would have given the Dutch a better fight. It's a shame, but at least with this tournament gone, we can finally say to Greg Berhalter, Good oh, you've gotta be fu- I'll be continuing to watch the World Cup, of course, doing the knockout stage reviews, doing a couple other videos that um, I feel would be kind of cool to do. But of course, a massive shout out to all our patrons, including Janos Balash, El Favi, Miliwe009, Aldipu, Alex Rod, Ulta, Amin Suomez, Araisan, Daniel Ortiz, Francisco Hernandez, Eyeshadow Ninja, Juan Leras, Miguel Munoz, Wendy Mintang, Return Fire, Rory Burns, Subscribe to Tendetem, The Motor Drive, Tomicus, Vanilla Mexican 17, Victor, Carlos and Naya, Chris Damaseno, David Dunn, Declan Malloy, Dominic Griffin, Emmett Shea, Lewis, Joe Aparicio, Jordan Clavin, MX Weed, Patrick Barley, President Pulisic, and Unbroken Persona. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and up in the annotations. You can follow my Twitter if you want, follow my Instagram. We are trying to get to that 10,000, of course, just like I said before. And if we do, 20 World Cup shirt giveaway. Remember that, so follow the Instagram. You can also follow my TikTok, trying to get to 20,000 there. And of course, you can follow my semi-active Twitch. And I'll start to do more watch-alongs in the quarterfinals. So watch out. But until then, I'll see you guys.